Superman and Lois, Season 3, Episode 8. Guess who's coming to dinner? In the beginning of this episode, we see that the chemotherapy is really starting to make Lois very, very ill. The boys and Clark get a bedroom set up down on the first floor for her to stay in. That was a difficult piece to watch because we don't usually see Lois Lane helpless in that manner. And she's very, very ill at this point. Jonathan is moving to the next level of his firefighter training, uh, which includes riding the truck with the rest of the crew to an active fire. Jonathan was supposed to stay outside at the truck, but he goes to help when Jordan brings an injured firefighter out the back door of the burning building. Kyle is furious because he thinks Jonathan disobeyed and went into the building. Jonathan tries to explain, but without being able to tell the truth, he's unable to convince Kyle that he's innocent. When Jonathan confronts Jordan about Jordan's saving the firefighter and then leaving Jonathan in the lurch, Jordan is very dismissive of Jonathan, and it's clear how little Jordan really thinks of what Jonathan is doing. Sarah tells Jordan that he was being a jerk to his brother. Jordan goes and tries to apologize to Jonathan. As it turns out, Jordan is in a bit of trouble because the fire department has noticed that there has been ice at a few of the fires, and Kyle suspects that they have a superhero who has been helping out. Lana has two tickets to go see The Cure. She was supposed to go with Kyle, but obviously that isn't going to happen now that they're divorced. She asks Sarah if she would like to go. Sarah turns her down, but Jordan rightly points out to Sarah that her mom might be lonely. Sarah and Jordan spend some time listening to The Cure and discover that the music is actually pretty good. At the end of the episode, we see Sarah and Lana dancing in their living room together to The Cure, which was a nice moment between mother and daughter. It looks like Sarah might actually be... I don't know, her character has been very inconsistent this season. This was one of the episodes where her character actually seemed to be pretty together, but we'll see what happens in the next episode. She started out this season seeming really off kilter, but as I said, we'll see where that goes. Mateo is very excited to introduce Natalie to his parents, and the dinner goes really well until John Henry shows up after learning from his sister that the restaurant where Natalie is having dinner is a Mannheim hangout. Mannheim has the kids taken out of the restaurant. He's going to execute John Henry, but John Henry's suit shows up and saves him. Clark hears that John Henry is in trouble, and Superman goes to John Henry, who is being attacked by Pia. Pia attacks Superman, but only succeeds in wearing herself down to the point that she's near death now. Superman takes Pia to the DOD, where she receives care while she is in custody. John Henry tells Natalie she can never see Mateo again. We see Mateo and his father having an argument, and Mateo just walks away from his father. In this episode, the person I feel the worst for is Mateo. Just because everything his parents have done, it's uh, it's all coming crashing down on him. He is going to lose his mom. He has now had a destroyed relationship with his dad. He's lost Natalie. You know, he's the one that's suffering the most, I think. Which was really too bad, because he seemed like a decent character, and I thought he and Natalie were kind of cute together, so it's disappointing. So we'll see what happens to Mateo, whether or not he's even still living in the house with his father, or what's going to happen there. Chrissy is ready to go to print with an article exposing Pia as Mannheim's wife, but Lois refuses to run the story. Lois is clearly not herself. She is projecting her own struggles with cancer into the Pia situation, and it's really misplaced empathy. Lois's father comes out to the farm. He brings Lois a bunch of classified files on Mannheim. Going through the files brings Lois back to herself, fortunately, and she starts digging into the new information. Sam was going to use the files as an excuse to not go on a coffee date he had set up through the seniors dating app that Jordan had put on his phone, but Lois makes him go. 
when Sam gets to the diner, he has just missed his date, and she left him a note telling him not to be late next time. Lana is actually sitting at the counter at the diner, eating alone, and she and Sam have a nice conversation about dating after their hearts have been broken. It's a shame that Lana's not just a little bit older, because um, that was really a nice conversation between her and Sam, but obviously Sam being Lois's father, that would be a little bit awkward. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Sam's mystery date. This episode seemed to be more of a bridge than anything really happening in this episode, aside from a couple of truths being exposed. By the end of the episode, Lois changes her mind about running the story about Pia, and she and Clark and Chrissy, they get to work sorting through the files that Sam brought. When listening to an audio recording of Lex Luthor admitting to murder, they realize that the recording was faked by Pia, and that Luthor may have been sent to prison for a crime that he didn't commit. And at the very end of the episode, Bizarro opens his eyes. As I said, this this seemed like a bridge episode where a lot of stuff happened that was necessary for the story to move forward. The next couple of episodes look like they're going to be very, very interesting. This episode wasn't necessarily bad, but it was a letdown from last week because I enjoyed last week the way it was shot, the way it flowed, the acting performances. This wasn't bad, but this was also not building on that momentum. It was like taking a step backwards when it came to that stuff. And maybe that's just that bridging that you're talking about that I just was ready to take this ride forward because that last episode that we reviewed set up, hey, we're getting ready to go somewhere, and we really didn't. Stuff did happen. I mean, John Henry confronting Mannheim and Pia getting super sick, like stuff happened, but I didn't feel this was a full episode of 40, 45 minutes. There were little pieces that might have mattered, but the whole thing didn't really land for me as a big piece of television. But, and I have to caveat it this way, because after watching stuff like Star Trek Picard, seeing the other CW shows, when I say this didn't work for me, that does not mean it's reverted back down to that level. That This episode was still better than what I just mentioned, but I'm just saying it didn't live up to the momentum that they were setting up in the last episode, the quality level, I should say. Yeah, I don't know who the writers were on the past two episodes, but like you said, the the previous episode, the writing and the direction just seemed to be better than this episode. And I'm not saying that this episode was horrible or anything. It just seems like the level that they had in the previous episode was just so high compared to, like you just said, the other CW shows, things like Star Trek Picard. Ugh. And this this was competently done. As I said, there were elements there that moved the plot forward, but it just seems that it wasn't quite to the same level as the previous episode. And there were some places here that I, in the story that I wish there would have been a little bit more here. When Kyle was piecing together that there was some other, I guess in the DC universe, they're called meta-humans, not mutants, but there was some meta-human that was helping out. I think you mentioned, because we talked about this after the episode, was there like one previous episode early in the season where they, that this topic came up about the frozen remnants when... Yeah, there was a previous episode where there was ice. Kyle did notice it, but they didn't really make a big deal out of it. So I really wasn't sure if Kyle was ever going to put any pieces together with that. But uh, with this episode... And it's weird because, like you said, in this episode... I mean, maybe I wasn't looking at the screen or something, but I don't remember seeing an actual scene where Kyle saw the ice... I mean, clearly he was called into the building and they wanted him to look at something, which, you know, led me to believe that Jordan had left something behind and sure enough, he'd left ice behind. But they didn't give us the scene where we actually saw Kyle seeing the thing and putting two and two together. It was just the pictures, I think, when he was going through the pictures of the, if I'm remembering the episode correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wish there would have been like a previous, an episode before this one But after the initial finding, when he noticed it the first time, of him starting to like, well, hmm, what's going on here? I'm going to start keeping track of this stuff. It's a nitpick of sorts. I just wish for continuity's sake they would have added that. 
And then the next issue I had was when Pia strained herself trying to turn that weapon, her sonic blasts, I guess we'll call them, on Superman, and he was he's struggling with it, but you could tell Superman probably could have taken that all day. And she was getting weaker and weaker, and then she fell over, and Mannheim was over her crying. That was a nice scene by Chad Coleman, by the way, good acting there. But then Superman was like, I've got to take her to a hospital now or she's going to die. And then he thought, Mannheim thought for a second and then nodded and said, go ahead. I guess I was a bit disappointed Superman took her to the DOD instead of an actual hospital. I thought he was going to take her to Mannheim's hospital, not the DOD. I understand in the episode itself, they explained why, because she was a danger. They wanted to have security around it and all that. But this goes back to one of our videos that we made before the season began, where it was established that Superman works outside the politics of the world, and he just helps people. And him delivering her to the DOD just, to me, felt kind of wrong. Well, especially after the treatment that Deadline had received at the DOD. I mean, they basically had him locked in a cell, and he's in there dying of cancer, and they didn't do jack shit. That didn't sit well with me. And yeah, you're right. I, I fully expected him to take her to an actual hospital, not the DOD. Again, on the internet, people have different interpretations of Superman. Rather like Star Trek has, I guess, a bazillion interpretations. But my interpretation of what I like about Superman, and this is, I've said this before, this is with the movies, the mainstream things. I'm not a comic book reader, so there might be a whole set of issues that gives a different angle on Superman. But I just, it rubbed me the wrong way. Mannheim never would have agreed for Superman to take her to the DOD. So when he said, I got to take her to a hospital or she's going to die, Mannheim thought about it and nodded and said, yes, yes, please save my wife. He didn't say that, but that's what the nodding meant. And then he just dumped her at the DOD and the DOD is already not taking care of a patient before. So again, is that a nitpick? Probably, but that just rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. Rather like, and it doesn't look like they're going to cover this again, when Clark was dealing with that trailer dad, instead of trying to help him in Clark form, he intimidated him and caused him to run away. Maybe they're going to cover that again. I saw people online. I, I went on YouTube and saw that clip, and then I read the comments underneath, and like the majority of people were, yeah, that's what Superman would do. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, Batman would be proud. And for me, it's like, but that didn't ring right for me. I even said that in the review. We both did. It would have been better for me anyway if Superman would have, Clark would have tried to be more understanding and tried to figure out what he can do to help this guy try to get through whatever he's trying to get through. Probably a Mannheim um, flunky, but... We don't know the details of that. This was similar to that, where it's just, to me, I would have had, if I was Mannheim, I'd have trust issues with Superman now, because instead of just getting his wife to safety so Mannheim could say, yeah, Superman helped her, he, he helps people, even if I don't like the guy, he took her to the DOD, which kind of reinforces what Mannheim was saying before about, oh, well, you don't come and take care of our neighborhood and it was a kind of a class struggle thing they were setting up before. So that, that that was the thing that rubbed me the wrong way. I wish Superman would have taken Pia back to Mannheim's hospital. Even though Superman and my Mannheim don't get along, it would be like, no, but Superman helps people even if he doesn't get along with somebody. So that, to me, rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. Agreed. I noticed that, too. And I'm like, why <laughs> did he take her there? I can understand why they would write that that way. Because that's what they think was the right thing to do, I guess. But like you pointed out, for Superman, I expected him to take her to a real hospital, not basically jail. Well, I got the first part right. After she was trying to basically kill him and she collapsed, he let all that go behind him and said, no, I'm going to save her. Even though she was just trying to kill me, I'm going to save her. Yeah, okay, that's Superman. Cool. But then you take her to the DOD. I don't know. That just seemed like all that did was cause Mannheim to dislike you even more. And to me, it goes against the messaging that Superman had last season in this show when he told the other general that he doesn't get into politics 
whether it's a North Korean submarine or whatever, uh, was it a Russian avalanche that was happening? He doesn't care about the politics. He's just there to save people. And this kind of went against that to me, but maybe that's just me. No, it was me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have anything else you want to say about this? No, it was it was an okay episode. I wouldn't... It was okay. That's the best I'm going to say. It was an okay episode. Yep. Looking forward to next week anyway. Yeah, I think they were setting up stuff. Next week is probably going to be better. I would agree. Well, anybody else watch this? What were your thoughts? Leave your comments below. Take care.